conflict resolution. Education is an integral part of conflict avoidance, and I'm sure nobody here needs to be convinced that conflict avoidance is preferable to conflict resolution. If you avoid conflict, you don't need to resolve it. And it is my feeling from what I've seen over the years that education is the principal key in this regard. In Northern Ireland, despite the fact that there is peace, there are still communities who live separated, Catholic and Protestant, sometimes by peace walls of high wire structures to impede the throwing of missiles or petrol bombs. And the people on either side still live in fear and suspicion of each other. Not so long ago, there was a demonstration on the White Rock Road in northwest Belfast in which the rioters pelted the police force with rocks, petrol bombs, and other missiles. And the police responded with a charge and arrested one of the rioters who was a little slow to get away. He was five years old and he had obviously been taught at an early age to hate. Nobody is born hating, discriminating, uh, being violent. It is something that has to be taught. And those of you who, maybe I'm showing my age here, may recall a very old movie called The King and I. You may recall a song from that movie which says, discrimination has to be carefully taught. Given the nature of the separated societies that still exist in parts of Belfast and indeed in parts of other major cities in Northern Ireland, and given the fact that about 90% of the schools are separate schools in which Protestants learn together and Catholics learn together but separately and play together separately, teaching is a difficult task in terms of avoiding conflict and teaching people that people have rights, that everybody is the same. This university, as has been mentioned, through Peaceful Schools International, which was started by Dr. Hedy Van Gerp, sitting beside, behind me on this, on this platform, and which is active in over 250 countries, uh, 250 schools in a number of countries worldwide, has been very active in Northern Ireland in sensitizing young people there to the need to respect each other, to the need to accept that nobody is different in the sense of religion, or race, or color, or creed. And they have been doing so with great effect. The whole concept of conflict resolution in all its aspects, and particularly conflict avoidance in all its aspects, is a simple one of teaching those who are in difficult situations to care. And Peaceful, in Peaceful Schools International has been doing that now for a number of years and with enormous success. In, in a moment, I will ask Chris McDougall, the uh, president of the St. Mary's University Student Association, to come up and accept the presentation of a school, of a flag for Peaceful Schools International, <coughs> which Eddie has allowed me to present to him as a token of appreciation for St. Mary's doing such useful work through that organization. But before I do, I would like to congratulate each of you graduates, first of all, for having chosen to come such a, to such a prestigious university as St. Mary's. Secondly, for having graduated. Not everybody does. Uh, I would also congratulate the faculty and staff and thank them on your behalf for bringing, to, bringing you to this particular stage and to your families for having encouraged you in what it is that you do. I wish all of you much success in the future. And on behalf of my two honorary degree recipients, I thank the university again for your great kindness to all of us. Now I call upon Chris McDougall to come up and accept this flag.
Dr. Dushastlan, we uh, thank you both for your very thoughtful address to our graduates and also for presenting us with the flag of Peaceful Schools International. It will become part of the university's permanent collection of flags and will be displayed at our spring 2009 convocation. We now come to the conferring of degrees